Hey Mighty Braves, it's Miss Arrocho here again with um, another edition of our first chapter Friday. Now I know we've been doing some, we've been doing some Tuesday tastings, but I wanted to go back to first chapter Friday. This book right here by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley um, is a Newberry Honor book. It deals with some heavy stuff and I like the narrator of the story. It's the main character, Della. She is uh, talking about her story. So without further ado, let's get into it. My new tattoo is covered by a band-aid, but halfway through recess, the band-aid falls off. I'm hanging my winter coat on the hook in our fourth grade classroom when my teacher, Ms. Devante, walks by and gasps. Della, is that a tattoo? I hold up my wrist to show it to her. It's an ampersand, I say, careful to pronounce the words correctly. I know that, Miss Devante says. Is it real? It's so real, it still hurts, and the skin around it is red and puffy. Yes, ma'am, I say. She shakes her head and mutters. I'm not one of her favorite students. I may be one of her least favorites. I don't care. I love, love, love my ampersand tattoo. And for those of you who may not know, an ampersand is that kind of fancy and symbol. I am 10 years old. I'm going to tell you the whole story. Some parts are hard, so I'll leave those for later. I'll start with the easy stuff. My name is Delicious Neve Roberts. Yeah, I know. With a first name like that, why don't I just go by Neve? I never tell anyone my name is Delicious, but it's down on my school records and teachers usually blurt it out on the first day. I've had a lot of first days lately. If I can if I can get it in before the teacher says delicious out loud, I'll say, I go by Della. I mean, I'll say that anyhow. I answer to Della, not delicious. Thank you. But it's easier if no one ever hears delicious. Once, a boy tried to lick me to see if I was delicious. I kicked him in the... Suki says I can't use bad words. Not if I want anybody to read my story. Everybody I know uses bad words all the time just not written down. Anyway, I kicked him right in the zipper of his blue jeans. Let's just say it like that. And it was what got me in trouble. It's always the girl that gets in trouble. It's usually me. Suki didn't care. She said, you stick up for yourself, Della. You don't take crap from nobody. Can I say crap in a story? Anyhow, she didn't say crap. She said something worse. Let me fix that. Suki says whenever I want to use bad words, I can say snow or snowflake or snowy. I kicked him right in the snow. Don't you take snow from nobody. Yeah, that works. Okay, so back to me. Delicious Neve Roberts. The Neve is heaven, spelled backwards, of course. There's usually at least one girl in my class called Neve. It's a real popular name around here. I don't know why. It sounds dumb to me. Heaven backwards? What was my mother thinking? Mm, probably she wasn't. That's just the truth. My mother is incarcerated. Her parental rights have been terminated. That just happened lately. Nobody bothered to before, even though by the time she gets out of prison, I'll be old enough to vote. I can't remember her, except one tiny bit, like, like a scene from a movie. Suki says she was no better than a hamster when it came to being a mother. And hamsters sometimes eat their babies. It was always Suki who took care of me, mostly still is. Suki's my sister. She's 16. I'm still on the easy part of the story, if you can believe that. Suki's full name is Suki Grace Roberts. Suki isn't short for anything, though it sounds like it should be. And that Roberts part, well, that's our mother's last name too. Suki and me, we don't know who our fathers are, except they were probably different people, and neither one of them was Clifton. Thank God. Suki swears that's true, and I believe her. Can you say God in a story? Because I wasn't taking his name in vain right there. I really am thanking God. Whatever God there is, that Clifton ain't my daddy. Suki used to have a photograph of Mama from her trial. White, pale face, sores on it, black teeth from the meth, pale, white, lanky hair. Suki says she bleached her hair, but whatever you, but whatever, you can see it's got no texture to it. Hangs like strings. Suki's hair is soft and shiny, 
dark brown except when she dyes it black. It's a prettier version of Mama's hair, and her eyes look like Mama's too. My hair has bounce. It tangles up all the time. My eyes are lighter than Suki's and Mama's. Suki's skin is skim milk white, so pale her belly almost looks blue. She burns bright red when she goes out into the sun. My skin's browner, and I don't never need sunscreen, no matter what Suki says. So while me and Suki don't know one single thing about our fathers, we're guessing they weren't the same. Which is good, right? Because if the same guy stuck around long enough to be a daddy to both me and Suki, he should have stayed and helped us out of this mess. Otherwise, he'd just be a snowman. What Suki thinks, and me too, is that Mama probably never told either of our daddies that she was going to have their baby. So we can't blame them for not being around. It's possible they were great guys. Fantastic in just every way, except, of course, hanging out with our mother, who was always a hot mess. I got a big mouth. That's a good thing. It's excellent. And let me tell you a story to explain. Last week at school, this was a couple of days before I showed up with my new tattoo, Ms. Devonting told us we all had to draw family trees. She showed us what she wanted, lines drawn like branches, mother, father, grandparents, aunts and uncles and cousins. My tree would dead end at Mama, behind bars, with Suki sticking off, sticking off to one side. Wasn't no way I was going to draw that, especially since I suspected it was something Ms. Devante planned to hang out in the hall outside her classroom for the entire school to see. Ms. Devante still doesn't get it. I don't know why not. I thought she was starting to. So instead of a family tree, I drew a wolf. I'm getting better at wolves. I made her eyes dark and soft, but her mouth open, showing fangs. I borrowed Neve's silver markers to outline her fur. Miss Devante came past and said, Della, what are you doing? That's not the assignment. I said, this wolf is my family tree. And I gave her a look. Miss Devante doesn't know my whole story, but she knows an awful lot of it, especially given all that's happened lately. If Miss Devante stopped to think even for just a moment, I bet she could guess why I didn't want to draw a family tree. Nope. She tightened her lips and said, I want you to do the assignment I gave you. And I said, this assignment is snow. I got in trouble for saying snow. I knew I would. It's why I said it. I got to take a little trip down to the principal's office. The principal and I are practically friends now. Her name is Dr. Penny. Penny is her last name, I asked. Dr. Penny said, Della, to what do I owe the pleasure of seeing you this time? I said, I'm not doing that assignment. I can't fix my family tree and it's nobody's business but mine. Oh, said Dr. Penny. Then she asked what I was doing instead of the assignment. And then she agreed that drawing a wolf seemed like a reasonable compromise. She said she'd have a word with Miss Devante. I said, Luisa doesn't want to draw off her family tree either. Or Neve. Neve's dad left a few years ago. Luisa, I didn't know her whole story, but I saw the way her eyes emptied out when Miss Devante told us what she wanted us to do. Miss Devante is still not listening until she asked you. Dr. Penny sighed. I don't know who she was sighing at. Then she said, I'll talk to her, Della. I said, she ought to be paying better attention. I'm only 10 years old, and I noticed Luisa's eyes and the way they shoulders tightened. Miss Devante is the teacher. Francine says you can trust some people, but not all of them. I didn't think I would ever trust Miss Devante. Dr. Penny said, it might be helpful, Della, if you quit using words like snow. I said, mm, probably not. I wasn't trying to give her lip. But I said, when I said snow, I got to come down here and explain this to you. If I didn't say snow, I'd have to say why I don't want to draw a family tree. The whole class would have heard my business, and then I'd get made fun of on the playground. Dr. Penny paused. She looked at me for what felt like a long time, and then she said, Thank you for that explanation. She suggested I sit in the comfy chair in her office until recess. She had a shelf of books I could read. I don't like books much, but there was one on dinosaur poop that was interesting. I don't know what Dr. Penny said to Miss Devante, but I didn't have to make a family tree. And Miss Devante didn't hang any of them in the hall. See? It's useful to have a big mouth. Next thing I'm going to do with this is help put Clifton in prison for a long, long time.
Oh, we're still on the easy part of the story. So a lot going on right there with Miss Della. Um, we still don't know her whole story, but we know that her sister takes care of her and her mother's in prison and she doesn't really get along with her teacher, but she has a very understanding principal. And so that's always a good thing. Um, but if you're interested in this book, go ahead and come by the HMS library and check it out. See you guys next time.